hello, I'm my back. Hi, I'm Bunny Says, and we're here for another game of Cinderella Phenomenon. It's a bright, beautiful, warm summer's day. And, uh, I hope you're just as warm. If not, bundle up. I don't know where or when you're listening to this, but hopefully you're cozy. <clears throat> you have a nice drink. And we're going to continue on with our little saga <laughs> of uh, Rumpel, who, as I recall last time, um, tried to get us to flirt with one of the customers in the tavern. And that did not go so well, which uh, I found pretty amusing. But okay, well, let's continue on. If you hear any. Um, some occasional noises. There might be some birds and things that are a little loud today, but hopefully not too bad. I'll try to straighten it out. <coughs> Excuse me. This can help before my voice because it gives out. So, all right. Uh, as I remember, um, we sent one up to the her room, and uh, after she we felt humiliated at the flirting attempt and, and uh, she apologized to Anise and Rumpel heard it, heard it overheard it as you well it was eavesdropping and uh, she finally came down and started helping out at the tavern so let's continue on from here days go by I consider Rumpel's advice, but I refuse to flirt with anyone again. But I have no idea how to make anyone happy. Rumpel told me that I cannot make anyone happy without knowing anything about them. <clears throat> and listening to them like I did with Anise. But what reason do I have to listen to people? This is so frustrating. Days later, Rumpel and I sit at a table, waiting for our work orders. Rumpel is on the verge of conversation when we suddenly hear Parfait speaking in the, in the doorway. Rumpel picks up on the words before I do, and rushes over to the front door. He looked almost nervous. He was at the front door. I excuse myself briefly, telling Anise that I will be, ba be back. I make my way over to the front door, and there I see three people in conversation. There's Rumpel and Parfait, and a very pale man. The pale man looks like death itself, like he might just keel over. Rumpel, I can help him. Parfait. Rumpel. He needs help. He can stay in my room instead. I can even restock the medicines on my own if need be. So please, let me help him. There is a desperation in Rumpel's eyes that I have never seen before. He looks at Parfait pleadingly, all the while holding the man by the shoulder to steady him. What is happening? Parfait. Oh, Princess. This man heard about Rumpel through one of the men at the tavern. He's sick and doesn't have a lot of money to pay for treatment. He came here seeking Rumpel. He must have been able to find this place because he was cursed. Does he even have the money to pay? Rumpel turns to me with a frown on his face. I have never seen him look at me so sternly. Princess, do you remember what I told you before? He was insistent that a doctor's number one priority was to help their patient, regardless of their monetary situation. Parfait, take him to your room then, Rumble. I will have Anise assist you, if she's willing. No, Anise does not need to worry herself. I think she'd want to help you. 
The two cut the discussion short when the man starts coughing. A terrible hacking cough that paralyzes him. Mumbo steadies him and then he begins to slowly move him towards his room. Don't worry, Princess. You'll be fine. Huh? I could see the worry in your face. Rumpo will be fine. Why would I worry about Rumpo? Because it's not like you to worry about someone you don't know at all. You look so alarmed. I've never seen Rumpo look like that before. It's not like him. Rumpo knows what he's doing. I'll have someone else assist you with serving today, so no worries. Parfait comes through on our promise. When I go back to the bar, both Anise and Rumpel are gone. Karma, or Miss Karma, is there instead, looking disgruntled. Karma is here. She looks, uh, yeah, she looks disgruntled. Waltz, Waltz would be better at this. Why do I have to help? As Walt is busy doing his puppet shows, and Rumpo is helping a sick man. No. Well, I guess there's nothing to do about this then, other than to enjoy it. He flips his hair and smiles brilliantly. I will attract all of the customers today. Perhaps we should have a competition, Princess. Compete with yourself. I'm really not in the mood for karma right now. Then I shall definitely compete with myself, because challenging yourself is important. Karma picks up waiting tables fairly easily. I notice that he speaks very fondly to the girls, but they are not as receptive as they are with Rumpel. Really? So Rumpel's a better flirt than Karma? That's that's surprising. Okay. Many times they ask what. Kama where Rumpel is, and he seems agitated when he tells them that Rumpel is busy. They seem just as irritated. Oh, so it's true. Okay. Once my break starts, I meet Kama at the bar. He looks depressed. I guess if you and Rumpel competed to woo girls, you would win. Yeah, Kama looks upset at that. Donnie, if I were to share my disguise right here and now, I would be the clear victor. Since without this disguise, women would flock to me. It is rather uncomfortable to have every woman in Gale fall in love with you. You look like you're judging me, Princess. Because I am. If only I understood my plight. Karma and Rumpel may speak similarly, but they are still so different. Karma is the type to complain. Rumpel never complains. He is overworking himself for someone else, just like he went out of his way to apologize to me many times. My heart sinks a little bit as I think of him and Anise helping out the sick man. Rumpel did not even want Anise to go up there, so he probably wouldn't want me up there either. Try to go visit him, or I could go back to my room. Hmm, so we have a choice here. Go to Rumpel's room, or go back to my room. Okay. I want to go to Rumpel's room. I don't think he'll be... I don't think he'll be too upset. I mean, I mean, I mean I just want to show some concern. I would like to go. I don't think she should. Just to see more of Rumpel, Rumpel's good side, so... Okay, let's go to Rumpel's room. I think I'll go check on him. Check on Rumpel? I hadn't realized I was speaking aloud. I look at Karma, who froze his eyebrows at me slightly. I honestly don't know how you can stand him as a partner. 
Why do you dislike Rumpel so much? Hmm. A lot of things, Princess. But that fight is between us and doesn't involve you. It doesn't involve me. You have no need to comment on us being partners. Kama looks at me, wide-eyed and a little, a little shocked. Then a sort of knowing comes into his eyes, and he smiles just a little bit. Yes, I think you should, you should go visit him, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get him off your mind, would you? Wait a second, you see that diamond? That was a different... It was always red before, that was purple. Does that mean all those times when I was talking to Kama and they come up red? That was saying the wrong thing. <laughs> so, is red bad and purple's good? I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know that diamond. I don't know what that diamond is. I mean, I saw it in the in, in the uh, tutorial thing where I was talking about it, but and it said it was something, some indicator of the choice, right or wrong, but it didn't tell you which, like that. You know, red is bad and green and purple is good. You like that you made a good choice. So I have no idea what you want to do. I like what it is. I I see it pop up, but I don't know what it means. So <coughs> excuse me. So I have no idea. Um, I think that means that red is bad. I think I, I think all those times I was talking to Kamen and they kept on coming out red. I thought it was bad. Oh well. He laughs a little before picking up a stray and rushing off to continue his shift. I slowly make my way upstairs, my feet feeling heavy. Now we're in the common room. For some reason, I feel like Kamo is right. I make my way over to what I think is Rumpel's door. The door is slightly ajar, and I hear hushed voices voices on the other side. <clears throat> Those voices definitely belong to Anise and Rumpel. I slowly push the door open and quietly step inside. Okay, we're in a room. Uh, okay. Looks like Anise, it looks like Anise that's bedroom, like that type of room. Rumpel and Anise are standing over the man, who is covered in blankets and coughing. A series, series of bottles sit on the table close by. Rumpel. None of the herbal remedies are working. We need a medicine for this. Anise. I'm sorry I don't have any more money to offer, Rumpel. Anise, please don't sound so sad. I've already tried to help you. You've already tried helping as much as you possibly can. It's... It's my fault for promising to buy the medicine that we need. I glance at the table where a list is sitting. Beautiful cursive handwriting details everything that the patient needs. Everything is circled except for some medicine at the very bottom that has a star next to it. Is that Rumpel's handwriting? Suddenly the two of them turn. They both look shocked to see me. Princess, what are you doing here? Did she not knock again? Does this woman just not know how to knock? What is up, what is up with her? I came to see how you were doing. Princess, I'm fine, but maybe you should knock. He glances down at the man in the bed, and he sighs out a little bit. We've given him what we can, but the one medicine that we need is something we can't afford. Rumpel, even with the money I'm getting from Lady Parfait, it isn't enough. I walk into the room and glance at the list. I look, look over at the total for the medicine, then at the coins on the table that I hadn't noticed before. Did Rumpel use all his money for the stranger? What will happen if you do not get this medicine? 
without this, the infection will spread, and he could he goes silent as a man starts coughing again. I can read the answer in his eyes, even if he won't say it. The man can be in terrible danger. He could even die. <coughs> Uncle looks defeated. He does not look like himself at all. I glance at the coins again and at the list. Without a second thought, I grab both the list and the coins. Princess, what are you... I'll be back. I leave the room, even with the niece and uncle protesting behind me. I make my way to the room where I pick up the bag of coins that the king gave me when I went to the palace on the day I was cursed. Then I head for the door. So my scowl alarm is going off. I hope it stops soon. Okay. Well, hopefully I can edit that out. I immediately head for the medicine store that we always frequent. I count out the coins that I need to buy the medicine. This will take all my money, but it wasn't as if I was going to use it for something else. I rush back to the machine with the medicine in a little bag, hoping that this is the one that Uncle needs. <coughs> it is dark by the time I get back to the machine. I make my way to Uncle's room again and notice that he is sitting on a stool beside the patient's bed, looking at him forlornly. When I enter the room, his eyes go wide. He seems even more surprised when I hand him the bag. Princess, is this? He opens the bag and lets the little vial roll into his hand. Oh, it's a little vial of blue medicine, it looks like. How did you buy this? I combined your total with the money I had left. Uncle just stares at me, clearly flabbergasted. Then his expression, his expression morphs into something softer, something more relieved. He steps, he steps forward, and suddenly, his arms are around me. He grips me tightly. And then I hear his voice in my ear. Thank you so much, Princess Lucette. My heartbeat picks up slightly. It is so loud that I think Rumpel might hear it. But when he pulls away, he does not say anything. I'll have to thank you for this later, Princess. But for now, you should leave. I don't want you to get sick. I am too tasted dazed to disagree. I nod my head quietly before moving before moving stiffly toward the door. I glance back at Rumpel one last time, noticing that he's checking the man's temperature. The moment I leave the room a flash of light emanates from my chest. I absently touch the glass slipper around my neck, and then pause as I stare down at it. I feel a soft gasp leave my lips as when I notice the fragment of a second slipper. I... I got my first good deed. I bought the medicine for Uncle, but I only added in a few more coins to buy it. So what I did today was considered a good deed. I'm confused, but at the same time, I am pleased that I actually managed to get a good deed. Now I, now I only need two more. She didn't even recognize that that was a good deed. That's how, think about it, that's how shocking her upbringing must have been, you know, that something as simple as that that you would have thought of, she doesn't even recognize as something that something good to do. 
why she has a hard time recognizing it. The next day I go down to the tavern area to begin my work, but I am there a little early. Waltz is working with his puppets at a table, eyebrows furrowed in concentration. When I walk in, he looks up at me and smiles. Then he raises, it, raises his eyebrows. Princess, congratulations. It's Waltz here. You had your first good deed. I did. I knew you could do it. I nod in response. His praise makes me feel oddly proud. I continue my usual work, keeping an eye out for Rumpel as I work my shift, but he never appears. A few days go by, and it is only after the man leaves, looking a lot healthier and stable than he was before, that I finally see Rumpel. He and the man speak at the front door to the tavern. No, really, sir. I couldn't take anything from you. That's Rumpel speaking. The man. Nonsense. You saved my life. I need to pay you back somehow. The man is holding money out to Rumpel. But Rumpel just shakes his head. I notice that there are dark circles under his eyes. And that he looks tired. I didn't help you for the money. And I insist. That money could be spent on better things, like your family. You may not take my money, but I promise I will pay you back. Your health is all the reward I need, I promise. I can't thank you enough. After the man leaves, I approach, Rump I approach Rumpel. He turns to me and leans against the door. His smile still tired, but bright. Ah, princess. Come to heal my weary body, perhaps? I would so love another hug. My face becomes hot at the memory of Rumpel's hug from the other day. Ah, the natural rouge of your cheeks is so sweet, princess. It makes me feel infinitely better. And your necklace seems... different. I reach up to touch the pendant. Every time I get a good deed, a piece gets added to my necklace. All right. <clears throat> You helped with the medicine the other day. Of course that was a good day, Princess. It was very selfless of you. Thank you again for that. The man tried to thank you too, but you refused his money. Why? Why did you spend your money on him? Because life is invaluable, Princess. No amount of money could ever be more important than a person's life. Even if it is someone you do not know? Yes, because everyone has a life, Princess. They have loved ones, families, sweethearts. If I can help, and if I can help them, I will. And I will gladly spend any amount of money to do so. Okay, fine. But why did you not accept any money from that man? Because no amount of money you needed that money. How are you going to buy more medicines without any money? Rumpel's eyes widen. He was clearly not expecting me to ask that question. But he said before he didn't have much money, and it was true. I can't take money from him when he doesn't have much of it to begin with. He was thanking you with money. You should have accepted it. My Faye pays you, does she not? Rumpel showed the sag when he sighs. Yes, even though I won't accept any money from her face to face, 
She has to sneak it into my wallet. If she does that, why not just accept it from her? I'm trying to make a statement, princess. The parfait does not seem to care because she sneaks the, mo sneaks the money into your wallet regardless. No, you have a point there. You're stubborn. We both are. Now I have a question. Why did you use your money on that man? You knew nothing about him. Did you do it for him? For yourself? Or for me, perhaps? Mumbo grins at me mischievously. Even with the tired eyes, I could still see the bright chair in them. Hit the nail right on the head again. They're becoming easier to read, my sweet princess. Well, no matter why you did it, thank you. That medicine was necessary to help that man. I still think you should have accepted money from him. You helped him and did him a service no one else would. You should have accepted his gratitude. Princess, I told you. I crossed my arms and frowned at him. You're so stubborn. My whole smile falters and he just looks at me sadly, almost guiltily. For some reason, the sight of him in such a state makes my heart sink. Wipe off that frown. You look better with a smile. Mumpo stares at me, shocked. Why is he staring at me like that? You like my smile? What? I did not say I. You like my smile. You complimented it too. Princess, you have no idea how much this means to me. Rumpel throws his hands in the air. I resist the urge to roll my eyes at the exaggerated reaction. You get compliments all the time from women. Yes, but none are honest as yours. That compliment is valuable because I know you absolutely meant it. So I will keep those words close to my heart, because they are precious to me. Was it anything like the spectacular compliments he gives? He still looks so happy. This is parfait. You do seem to be getting along. Parfait appears behind us with a smile on her face. Sorry to interrupt, but who said? Karma is slowly drowning in table work. Did you help him? Yes, of course. Rumpel looks disappointed as I am sent back to the bar, where Karma expresses immediate relief that I am back. Rumpel retires to his room early that day, and he is given the day off. Both Delora and Parfait can see the tiredness on his face, just like I, just like I can. He does not reappear for the rest of the day. At the end of the shift, I retire to my room. Okay, uh, it's getting on 30 minutes. Uh, let's stop here for a bit. And uh, we'll be right back. Hopefully there'll be uh, less interruptions. And uh, we'll continue on. <laughs> 